If you are someone who is looking for options to study abroad for your higher studies and you are also interested to know if Japan can be a good option for your higher studies, so this video is going to be for you. If you stick around till the end of the video, you will know everything about how to apply and get scholarships and other possible options to pursue higher studies in Japan. So let's get started. Why should you consider Japan in the first place? Japan is one of the safest countries in the world, actually second safest in the whole world safest countries ranking. And also technologically advanced yet culturally rich country. I usually describe Japan as a country where technology and traditions coexist. And Japanese hospitality is one of the best among the world. There is actually a term to describe it which is called uh, omotenashi. So that means to providing best class hospitality to customers without having any expectations from them in the return. And last but the most important reason for me to consider Japan is Japan has huge demand for foreign skilled people at this stage and they are investing a lot in R&D in other sectors to encourage more and more foreign skilled people to come to Japan and build their careers here. So for example according to a survey by the end of 2030 there will be a shortage of 0.7 million foreign IT professionals in Japan. So this is just one sector and this is the situation of all other sectors. So that means there are a lot of lot of opportunities for you to grow and grab in the future if you come to Japan. So there are a couple of options and scholarships to come to Japan for pursuing your higher degrees but I will start explaining from the major one which is MEXT. So MEXT is Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. So the major benefits of this scholarship for undergrad, masters and PhD are that all of your tuition fees are exempted under this scholarship and you, you are also provided 150,000 yen per month as a stipend and also your air travel uh, for coming to Japan and going back after the studies is also covered under this scholarship. Some other benefits include that if you are in Japan as a student, part-time work is also allowed and there is no bond to return to your home country after you finish your studies. And you can also invite your family members while you are studying in Japan as a student. And if you for example start your scholarship or start your studies um, from masters, you can continue the same scholarship to PhD as well. So there are actually two routes to apply for MEXT scholarship. One is through the embassy track. In this case you apply in the Japanese embassy of your in your home country and the other track is directly applying in the university. So in this video I will be focusing mainly on the university recommendation track. And actually there are some other scholarships like JICA ADB. It's also similar to as applying for MEXT embassy track. So I will explain their procedure as well in a bit. So this is the application timeline. For example, if you apply this year, your studies will start from next year. So for the embassy track, the application start from April and after application test and interview and scholarship acceptance, then you have to apply for the admission in the university and you have a choice to start your studies either from April or October in the following year after the application year. And if you apply directly through the university track, you apply almost around October to November and your, your studies will start from the following year, from October. So university track and the embassy recommendation track overlap with each other when you have to apply for the admission in the universities. So actually I would say that in university recommendation track you have a lot more options than embassy recommendation track because in embassy recommendation track there will be 10 to 15 seats uh, dedicated to your country. But if you apply through the university track each university has its own allocated seat so you have a lot of options because there are so many universities in Japan. So these are the major steps uh, to apply through the university. First of all, you have to shortlist the universities 
which are offering uh, max scholarships actually i will provide a list of all these universities in the description of this video so please have a look and after that you have to shortlist the professors because in japan master's degree or also the phd degree is done under the supervision of professor so once you have the list of the professors you want to work with you have to send them research proposal that is actually the most important part of the application and I have a complete video on describing how to make an effective research proposal. I will provide the link uh, above in the video. And after preparing the research proposal, you should send email to professors explaining your profile and uh, by attaching your research proposal and how to approach professors. I also have another video to explain that so you can also have a look. And once the professor agrees to work with you after, for example, having a short interview, they will give you a provis provisional acceptance letter from the professor. And once you have that letter, you will apply for the actual admission in the university along with that acceptance letter from the professor and also by attaching your academic documents. And based on the criteria of the university, they will publish the list of successful candidates on their website and that's when you are confirmed uh, for the scholarship and some general information about the scholarship there are more than 800 universities in japan and you should see that which of the universities are providing scholarships i i will provide the list in the description so have a look there as well and also you should choose the universities which are offering major which you are interested in and Many of the universities are providing courses for masters and PhD in English so you should consider that if you want to study in English and also you can also shortlist the universities based on your preferred location. For example in my case I wanted to study in Tokyo so that's why I focused on universities in Tokyo. And usually people ask if the IELTS required for this scholarship or not so the short question is no IELTS is not mandatory. If you have proficiency letter English proficiency letter from your previous university for example if your previous degree was in English you can get that letter from the university and provide it as a replacement of IELTS uh, certification and how to make a good research proposal you should read the web pages of the labs and web pages of different professor from each university as much as uh, possible so yeah again please have a look at the video to make a good research proposal and the criteria for max scholarship or any other government scholarship in Japan is you should have 80% marks in your previous degree. So please don't get disappointed if you don't fulfill this criteria. I have a uh, few other options uh, for you which I will discuss in a bit later. So just as an example, here are some of the universities where the application is already open. For example, Tokyo Tech University where I graduated from, their scholarship application is already open which will which has already started from September 11 and it will end at December 6 and you should also notice that you have to submit the acceptance letter from the professor until November 29th so it's very important to have have consent from the professor if you want to take admission in the university similarly another university uh, Asia Pacific University has also their application open so the deadline for the application is November 15 almost uh, one month from now so please check out their website as well and in the same way please check out the websites of all other universities which are offering max scholarships and they are offering your desired program in English so in the same way the applications usually start from October and and during November so this is the best time to explore the websites and apply for the scholarship if you for example are not eligible for the scholarship you don't have 80% marks in your previous degree there are still so many options for you for example you can take admission in the university without scholarship in the beginning and once you have your admission secured then there are multiple options to apply for for example, there is one option to apply in many universities for JASO scholarship. JASO is Japanese Student Service Organization. So they provide you monthly stipend uh, to cover your living expenses. And there, are, in many universities, there are some private scholarships or fee exemption options as well. 
So if, if you secure the admission in the university, you can come to the university uh, by, for example, paying your own flight ticket. And then after coming here, you can apply for fees exemption for many other private scholarships as well. And there is also option to cover your educational expenses by doing part-time job, which is usually available in Tokyo. And on my channel, I have been uploading a lot of videos about Japanese scholarships. So if you are interested to get to know more details and more insights about Japanese scholarships, please have a look at my channel and consider subscribing. And if you have any other questions regarding the scholarship, please feel free to ask in the comment section of this video. I will try my best to answer as many questions as possible. And if you want to get in touch with me on any of the socials, you can scan this QR code and you can get in touch with me on any of the socials and I will be very happy to give you any kind of information. But please try to read these uh, resources as much as possible and try to understand the procedure from these videos and I will be happy to answer any questions if you have any further specific questions. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.